Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I bring to you today a John Deere Lawn Tractor 1025R. Uh, this unit has a very interesting uh, issue. It's a shift to neutral fault. Uh, basically, when you're in neutral, it believes that you're not. This is uh, a common issue with this machine, and uh, typically it's probably an easy uh, neutral safety switch. Uh, which is down here, uh, the bottom half of the hydrostat, front side of it, so more towards like the engine, and it's kind of heading up in this little nook above the drive shaft, those little wires poking out there. And a uh, customer needed a uh, hydrostat service on this, so while I was in town, grabbed the fluid, filter, and a neutral safety switch. It's pretty cheap, only like $40 or so, so I went ahead and just grabbed it and uh, headed out there, swapped out the switch, it didn't fix it. This right here is the plug. This is where my troubleshooting starts. So what I'm doing here is um, tracing the wire back as far as I could go. It got into the main loom, so it's hard to trace. So I looked at the wiring numbers. Now the red wire is the power supply and the yellow wire in this is post switch. It makes a home run all the way up to the dash to this wire right here in the back of the dash to let it know it's in neutral. Um, this wire right here is numbered uh, 0514. And if you basically jump power up to that wire in the back of the dash, and when you power that wire, if it still shows shift, shift to neutral like this on the dash, essentially the problem is nothing to do with your wiring. It is in the dash specifically. So this unit needs a new dash. But I have another issue with this too, which might have taken the dash out. Uh, the key is on, but if I wiggle the wiring just right up here in the loom, it'll bring the dash back on and off. So I do have a broken wire in there. That's fairly evident. Um, so I could have went ahead and just found the broken wire due to the age of the machine and kind of it breaking in the main junction of the loom. I found it pertinent just to go ahead and swap out the uh, entire harness. It's not that big a deal, maybe four or five hours. So that's what I'm about to do and replacing the dash. Uh, if it was my own machine, I probably would just would have fixed the wire, but it's for somebody. So I don't want to come back to repair wires every so often. And I'm sure that they would be irritated with it as well. That's why I decided to go ahead and replace the entire harness along with the dash at the same time. Today I'm working on John Duh. So as you can tell, I already kind of started on the project. I got the side panels removed, uh, got the dash loosened up, and uh, pulled off some of the panels. Um, from here, I need to take off the floor pan. Uh, a couple of uh, bolts down there. It bolts the floor mat and the pan in all together. Uh, it's like 10 bolts or something like that. I'll go ahead and get that flipped up and out of here. Uh, that's where the loom will cross from the back half of the tractor, the front half of the tractor, so that will have to come off. So a little progress here. Uh, I'm removing the fuse panel. Um, just before this, I got all the uh, dash plugs undone. It's just about three plugs. Uh, they have a little uh, safety latch that you'll have to undo. Um, but I went ahead and getting this loosened up. So you'll get the uh, fuse panel out, dash off, and start unsecuring uh, from some of the places that it's pinned into. The new harness does come with the new uh, clamps so you can go ahead and pull everything out. We have the dash unhooked, starter and all that stuff, everything to the front console out. Um, we have a couple bolts here for the fuse panel. We took our little throttle cable off. You uh, pinch this down, pull it below so you can slip, slip the wire out. Get this out of the way. And then you can pull this harness out of the way. We need to start working on the engine side. So you've got your uh, fuel pump to undo. Um, you have a few other pieces of wiring. This is where the main loom ends and it splits. There's a standoff right here on the back of the block. You will have your uh, starter excite wire, your alternator, battery, um, and then there's a little clamp hole down right here behind the exhaust. 
We've got uh, probably coolant temp on the other side we'll have to take off. And then this one that goes to the battery compartment, we'll have to make sure we take that off. And there's a hole down right there. Yeah, there's a little bit of a trick to getting the headlight harness part out. If you undo the starter and pull the power cable up through here, like this, then it gives you plenty of room to pull the connectors out in one piece through this little cavity right here. So right here we're taking the harness and slipping it through from the engine side back into the driver compartment side. Uh, it's a little bit of a trick to get in there, but just take your time pulling it through. So from here, it's kind of your personal preference. Uh, I don't like trying to remember absolutely everything of where it goes, what plugs into what, and try to figure out how it's routed and what lays down best and if it's twisted or not. Uh, it's usually best to do big chunks and leave some of it in there. So you only have to remember so much at once. Once you get so much of that harness pulled through on that, uh, right hand side then we'll shove it across the back of the engine to cross back over to the left hand side um, and just pull the entire section through and that way you can kind of lay it up into the uh, area just above the starter uh, along the block uh, up into the securement place that's there kind of hidden there behind the alternator and then start laying it into place and before you get too carried away make sure you get the headlight harness pulled up through and once you get that pulled up through, you got to feed the power wire back through, get it back onto the starter, and then secure the wires in place on that motor mount area. As you can see, I went back through, got everything on this side secured in place, starter, alternator, water temp. And now we move over to the other side, and we'll start securing those things into place. And we'll start with the oil pressure sensor down here. And then uh, we will put the bolt in for the engine crown. Make sure the big part of the strap of the engine ground goes against the block first. Uh, make sure that they're clean. And then you'll do the eyelets from the harness and just kind of leave it there loose for the moment. Then you'll have to plug in your fuel pump, the uh, lock off solenoid for the fuel, up to the injection pump, um, glow plug, part of the harness. And once everything lays up in there kind of nice, you'll uh, secure that bolt down in place against the uh, engine block. And now we get to the fun part. Uh, this part's not too bad. Uh, we'll put the fuse panel up in place, uh, work it behind the uh, throttle cable, get the throttle cable back where it needs to be. Uh, this part's fairly easy. Um, there is one securement clip that's against the back firewall area that you need to make sure you get. Otherwise, you'll run into the situ situation that this customer had where basically the harness rattled itself to death um, because the harness wasn't secured where it should have been. Don't forget your park brake switch uh you have to get that uh, bolted back into place with the bracket uh, it's kind of a bugger to get the bracket and levers and everything back into place where they're supposed to be uh, you'll find that out when you go to actually put the column cover back on uh it's uh, kind of interesting getting that all back in there okay here most of the way through the worst part swap the dash out already And then we're going to put the clips on. Just make sure you're aware these are just safety clips. So these have to be pulled back, snapping completely, and these secure it from popping out. Got our fuse panel secured in place. This is kind of how this, how this sits in there. So this will be here. This is our key switch. This is for like our uh, other switches over here, for our lights and whatnot. Make sure we get that in place. All right, here we go. So this is the trickiest part. You have to unbolt seat mount bracket, get the wire harness up and over that part. And then you have to sneak it through. Let's see that. Sneak it through up there. Right. Up in here. And then I just gotta zip tie these in place. But as of right now, a good power. 
We are in neutral. Fixed. So I just got to put the plastics back on. As always, I appreciate you following me along for my projects. Make sure you check me out on my community page. I have an active poll out there right now. And uh, let me know what you think of the videos.